Hello. You need to get your printed circuit board fabricated by a manufacturer. There are three important things we would normally look at and export. One, the information to create the PCB material. If I had three on my keyboard to look at the 3D view, that's the PCB without the components. The second thing we would submit is information for how to place the components on the PCB. If we have the manufacturer do it or the assembly house, whoever, they need to know that. They need things like pick and place files, drawings to verify that they're placing it correctly, so on and so forth. The third thing we need is to verify logical connections. Ideally, that would be the IPC 2581 or the ODB++ documentation or the IPC uh, I want to say three, six, one files or three. I can't remember, but there are files you need to send them, send to them to verify the electrical connections, including a testing file, right? Now you don't, you don't need to do a full testing document necessarily, unless you're going to production, like, you know, and your board has test points and all that stuff. But let's generate our outputs for this PCB. So let's go to view 2D layout mode. If you want to try out Altium Designer free trial, just use the link in the description below. And the exports would be file fabrication. You can do the report of the board stack, click OK. See how it's generating the report board stack for the LiPo poly battery in the XLS format. This would be in your project outputs. Next, let's go and export uh, fabrication output. We would do, you can do a composite drill guide, you know, uh, drill drawings. Definitely drill is important. I don't like how this mechanical there is just all over the place with the text, but I won't turn it off. Next, we have file for our fabrication outputs that would be like our Gerber files. Hmm. I like the Gerber X2 setup and you would have things like bottom pad, master, uh, plot layers. If you want to auto detect certain things, leave comments in your Gerber files. Like it's totally up to you. What is this format? They're probably talking about the digits prior to the decimal point in the terms of the accuracy um, for the Gerber data. Gerber files are just text files. And so when they when they give you coordinates, they give the machine coordinates on how to etch things out and place things. Okay. We have our drills, bottom top layer, non-plated through hole drills. Do we want to plot those? Do we want to plot plated through hole drills? Do we want the drill drawing? Do we want a drill guide? Sure can plot, you can use all on, you know, and then click OK. This is what our cam view of the drill holes looks like. Okay. And then you can save Camtastic Cam, you know, um, I'll just put it in my generic project outputs for LiPo battery and just give it the name like LiPo battery drill and then indicate the layers to layers one to two. So we can go ahead and close this one. What else can we export? We'll do file export. Oh, no, no, no. File fabrication. This is still fabrication. This is about the PCB. We did the stack up. We did the the Gerber layers. We did the drill, right? We have the IPC2581, where this helps the manufacturer. I mean, it's the same thing, but it's a it's a much more intelligent, it's a completely intelligent uh, format for our fabrication data for the PCB. And which version you want, you can use metric. I'll use imperial. Floating point precision, six, merged net tie nets. That's fine. See how it's generating the IPC stuff? Very nice. 
what else can we do? Um, and just as a note, manufacturers, if they can take it, would prefer the IBC 2581 standard. The ODB++ one standard had, like, it was a sort of proprietary thing. Uh, it is a sort of proprietary thing, but so companies wanted to take things to, to a more generic general standard. When they ask for ODB++, this is an intelligent version of Gerber's. That's how I describe it, but uh, it's very useful. Include unconnected mid-layer, but mm, generate DRC rules, export files, board outline, plot layers. Yeah. There are mechanical layers you can add to the plot if you want, like top assembly, stuff like that. Totally up to you. This is the non-optimized way to export these files, okay. There is a lot of customization you can do and that I recommend that you do, including getting rid of this <laughs> this information on this footprints. It's really annoying. But other than that, this is what the cam engineer sees when they get your ODB++. Much better than just some drawings. We'll save this. LiPo battery mm, ODB plus plus and I would give this a rev name like right so like say say V21 or rev 20 you know it's it's whatever you want to call it save I right, click close if you really want to get the full information on these outputs and what needs to be in them, you need to talk to your manufacturer pretty much. You can do a test point report. If you have test points on here, ah yes, this is the IPC D356A. That's very useful data. And even the text file format, you know, um, Imperial. Click OK. Start units, blah, blah, blah. Sure. No signal there exists in the database, right? Please load the Gerber file before. Right, 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 right. Okay. It needs the Gerber file, blah, 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 so on and so forth. So it can test on these points. On, and you can do that. We can call this test or something. You know. Uh, LiPo battery test. I'm putting everything in the project outputs, but you would really organize this better. There are engineers who have very strong, good, organized ways to output this fabrication data and testing data. So that's a lot of information. You can upload your own designs from LTM or Eagle using LTM Online Viewer for free. Check it out in the link below. Now let's look at assembly drawings. For assembly, this doesn't have to do with the printed circuit board material or the fabrication. Really, it has to do with placing parts on the PCB. The manufacturer uh, assembly house really find these drawings very useful because if with, the draw, with how the drawing looks, they can make sure that they build the PCB the way it was intended. And they don't want to have to guess and mess up the project. Okay, so that means they get the process perfect and all errors and costs are passed. This remain with the designer, not the company, unless they really mess up something up. Click assembly drawing. And then with the assembly drawing, you can do a print, you know, you can just print it and Microsoft print the PDF type of deal, print the active document and you do it that way, you know, Altia LiPo battery project outputs for LiPo battery. And then you can say uh, LiPo battery assembly drawing. You know, you can you can say Rev A Rev 21 V21, it's up to you. Is you can generate the pick and place file. So anytime you're going to have something auto assembled for you, you need to give the assembly house or board manufacturer the pick and place file. 
you can add as many things as you want in here. I like to show the units. I do not like, uh, I just do not like documents that don't show units or drawings that don't show units. Exclude filter parameters, exclude variation, include variation component, that's fine. Cool. So that has some nice filtering in there. File. Yeah, we've generated this, the test point report. Finally, I would create a smart PDF of this board. So this current document. Now I would create a smart PDF of the current project, really. Yes. I think I made one already. And we'll do next to look at more options. Do I want to export a bill of materials? Yes. Okay. I can use a template if I want. Hmm, we'll see. Print physical designators. Entire sheet. Do we want to zoom in? And okay, if for the PDF for the smart PDF settings, you can show all kinds of stuff. All right, there's so many things you can uh, change. You can select which variant you want. Ports and sheet entries, sheet number parameter, document number parameter. Like the customization is ridiculous. And do I want to open the PDF file after export? Um, yes. I don't want to open the output job file after export. Great. What's useful about printing off the smart PDF is it's interactive. You can click on a part and its information will show up. Unfortunately, you can't like right click and copy the information, but it's okay. At least you can see what footprint or pad stack, I mean, footprint it has. You can see the do not place option, right? You can look at this design URL. It takes you to the design directly. So that's really cool. Let's see what else you can do. And it looks very sharp and clean. I mean, it's a, it's a PDF. So, but. Here's what the PCB prints looks like. You know, this is how it, this is how it appears. You can scroll up and down and look at it. Go to file. You can do a print preview to see how it looks. You can do a regular print, so on and so forth. You can do a design rule check, which is extremely important and something that I skipped entirely. But like if you run a design rule check, um, this shows you all the errors you get. Like we have total, a total 35 errors, silk to solder mask. But getting into all that would take forever to fix things. Sometimes these design, these errors will not be issues. Now I'm going to remove this silk screen. I forgot to remove this. And then you would just go through your errors and you can look at your messages that pulls up. You could say double click on here, whole size constraint, right? Old, old size violation, minimum solder mask. It doesn't like a lot of these errors in the, f within the footprints, but like this thing, it really, it's the footprints that it can, it's complaining about. And there's nothing I'm really going to do about those except modify the footprint and then update them. So there's so much more to Altium than meets the eye. I didn't do high speed design. I didn't do, uh, four layer stack up. There's just so much. Thank you for taking the time to go through this entire tutorial series. I know it's been a lot of stuff. There's board information and everything, but there is one more thing I want to show you. And that will be in the next video.